Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you all about the window object inside of a script UI. Now, I've created a lot of tutorials where I create windows, but in this particular one, I'm going to be going over all the depth of it, including the properties and methods you can apply to a window so you can access all the different things, create different types of windows and customize it to your liking. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel and down in the description you can follow us on github for code updates and instagram for updates on other things if you're not already a member of the discord server come and join us and get help with scripting extensions plugins and expressions and if you'd like to help support the youtube channel and get cool perks along the way you can become a member supporter premium supporter or vip so this window here is just a very simple window, but we're going to be going over all the properties and different things we can access inside of script UIs to customize a window. So today we're basically going to create a simple window, which we're then going to customize individual properties to see what they do and then learn a little bit along the way and zoom in a little bit here. I'm just going to create a variable for my window called window and to create a new window, we need to use the keyword new followed by capital window. You can see this will bring up some information depending on your code editor, and we can give it the type, title, bounds, and properties. So the first thing we need is the type. There are three types of windows we can create, a dialog window, a palette window, or a window window. We're gonna start with a palette type and then discover what the other ones do in a second. Then the second argument for a window is the title, which will appear in the top portion of your window itself. The third argument for a window are the bounds and the size. So basically it's going to be the width and height as well as any other size and information you need. And usually I just put this as undefined because I like my windows to be automatically filled in and define their size based on the elements within it. Sometimes you may find that using a custom size window will result in difficulties in aligning other elements or positioning. And if you want, you can call that good and that will create your window, but you also have the option of the extra properties. I'm going to load up my object model viewer, make sure I'm in script UI classes, take a look at my window for all of my information for today's video. And if we go to the add, we have our properties here. This is optional, but we can have creation properties that do different things. So if I go down to my properties here, you can see we have a couple of options. We have resizable SU1 panel coordinates, which is only available in Photoshop, a close button option, and a maximize button, which is also Photoshop only. For most cases, I only use the close button and resizable options, not only because that's the most common use case for me, but also because these are the most useful. So in order to pass these extra properties, we're going to enclose them in brackets. And for example, if I want to make sure I have a close button, I can say close button is equal to true. And now to actually show our window on the screen, we need to say window.show. Now if I run this, you can see we have our window and it's currently got a close button with our basic title. If you want, you can set this to be false and all of a sudden your close button is gone and now you have no way to close out. So if you go with this option, make sure to make a separate close button in your user interface. So I'm actually going to do that. I'll create a close button and to add something to a window, you just need to call the window and say dot add. We'll add the element type of button, undefined size, and we'll call it close. Then we'll create an on-click event for this button so that when we click on it, we can close our window. Now there are two ways to close a window. One of them is sort of a pseudo close. You can either hide or close your window. Closing it will actually close the entire window. And if you hide it, it will simply just basically disable its opacity from your viewing. So I could say window.hide when I click on close, but it's still going to be there. I just have nothing else in the user interface to activate it currently. But I could also say window.close, and this will do the same thing except totally close sort of the running script. And again, the other property you can use is resizable, which will allow you to resize it. And this is usually for um, dockable scripts when you actually have them in the interface and you need them to scale up or scale down with the varying user interface sizes. Now let's take a look at our other uh, window types. 
um, I'm gonna change it from palette to a dialog. And as you can see, this is pretty similar. One interesting thing is when I use a dialog window, my close button no longer works. And in fact, if you disable your close button and your close button doesn't work, you're kind of out of luck and you have to press uh, the escape key. So for a standard palette window, you can use the close button in the top left to close your window. But if you're using a dialog window, the escape key would be your option there. And lastly, there's the window type, which as you can see, gives us this little icon right here, which is a slightly different window, and we can actually maximize and minimize it like it was a Windows computer application. So that's just yet another option you have of your window generation. All right, now I'm gonna go over some basic properties that you'll usually want to access to adjust inside of your scripts. And the first one is going to bear window.orientation. Now we go over this all the time, but you have your column and row orientation. I'm gonna go ahead and create a secondary button, just called a null button, and this will help illustrate how this orientation works. If I set this to row, all of the children elements of our window are gonna go from left to right. So if I run this, you can see we have left to right. Now if I change it to a column, they're going to go from top to bottom. So this is just a way you can start organizing things inside of your windows. Usually it's not specific buttons. You usually wanna have groups and then you can have sub orientations of these groups and go left and right and customize things in much more detail. Another useful thing is uh, if you want to align the child elements in a certain way, if your UI is pretty big, in my case it's not, but you can say window.alignment and we'll set this equal to, you know, something like left or right justified. And if you go into the actual object model viewer, you can see we have different orientations for uh, row, column, and of course, stack. Another thing that's somewhat useful usually is to customize the size of your window, which we can do by calling dot size, and we need to provide a width and a height. So if I just say maybe 100, by 100, you can see it's not going to change much in our size. Let's make it 300 by 300. And now you can see we have a much bigger UI. Uh, it still contains our buttons here. We can still do everything with it. But now we have sort of a boundary here, and you can use this to fit elements that are bleeding off the edge or just to have some extra padding. Uh, one other useful thing is to make sure you center your window. This will physically center it to the very center of your screen uh, in screen coordinates. But as you can see, that has messed up our buttons, so we'll just leave it uh, at window.show. And although there are a ton of other properties and methods for windows, those are the main ones that I like to use. I like to make sure my orientations are correct. Using different window types to in different applications creates different looks as well. Um, using different close button options to either have a custom close button or the default script UI one. And also alignment of sub elements as well as customizing the window size if you have some sub elements that are too big or you just need more space. And then of course you wanna make sure you always show your window. It's a common mistake when first starting out. You've programmed your whole UI and you run it, but nothing happens. Make sure you show your user interface and then it should appear in the application. If you ever have any more questions or want to do more searching into what exactly you can access and change inside of a window, you can check out the Object Model Viewer in Extend Script or various guides online like the script UI 2.8 guide. And these will give you all the information, in this case just text information, of all the properties, uh, classes, and constructors we have for this, of different things that we can read and change inside of our window. And uh, here's the script UI guide 2.8, which is originally designed for InDesign, but it has very good visual examples of uh, basically what everything is and how it works. So you can see here we have a basic hello world window, which we can customize, and this will give you a good guide as well to expand upon your window creation knowledge. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, down below, hit the like button and the subscribe button, and make sure you hit the bell icon next to it to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub and Instagram to get cool updates on code and other things coming up. If you're not already a member on the Discord server, be sure to join us and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube and get cool perks in the process, become a member, supporter, premium supporter, 
or VIP on YouTube. And that's gonna do it for the video, guys. I'm gonna probably do more videos like this in the future where I pick a single scripting topic or a UI type of element and take a deep dive because I usually program them pretty fast in the videos and don't go into too much depth on all the different ways that you can program them and access them. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. This is a detailed